Hello there, I'm Shane Young, and I get the privilege of helping you learn Copilot Studio. But before we start, I did want to let you know that I worked with the Microsoft product team to create this awesome training for all of you Power Platform rock stars. Cool? Cool. Okay, let's get to it. In this section, we're going to look at an incident report triage autonomous agent built using Copilot Studio. This agent will be triggered or ran each time a new incident report is added to Dataverse. It will then pull in the incident, the related witnesses, and photos to determine the severity of the incident and to escalate or route the incident to the correct team. The agent will accomplish this by using Dataverse knowledge, a custom AI prompt ran by a Power Automate to analyze the photo, and finally, Dataverse and Outlook actions to update the incident and notify the necessary people all without any human interactions. This will give us a chance to see how an agent like this can help with your business processes today and how your Power Platform skills are directly applicable. Business logic, flows, connectors, Dataverse, AI prompts, all help us to achieve these outcomes. Also, when we're using all Microsoft business tools for this demo, remember, it could have just easily leveraged your business data from SAP, ServiceNow, Salesforce, or any of the other 1,500 plus data sources available via the Power Platform connectors or custom API. Sound like fun? It does to me. So let's switch over to my desktop and take a look. What better way to walk you through our custom agent for incident reporting than to start at the beginning of the process? So here I have a mobile Power App, right? Because usually incidents happen away from your desk, so it should be mobile. And so we're going to put in a new incident report. So we're going to go here, we're going to click on new. And for the location of this one, I think it happened in the office, like so. Incident date, we'll just choose today, that's fine. For the severity, we're gonna put high, and this will come back into play a little bit later, so we're gonna over-categorize this one. We're gonna set the category to an accident, and then for the description, we're gonna say something like, there's milk spilled all over the office floor, but he was running around like the crazy dog that he is, and he knocked it off Nicola's desk, right? So when I think about the incidents for this, I wanted something that was a little more lighthearted, you know, bad things happen. We don't want to talk about those here. So we're just going to deal with the incident of some spilled milk, right? And there's no crying over spilled milk. And I used the joke. I said I wasn't, but I did. What do you do? All right. We're going to add a witness here real quick. We'll just say that I was the witness. All right. So we got my name, my phone number, my driver's license number of 999. Who knows? And then Buddy did it, right? Super simple here. So we're going to do this. Now we could have multiple witnesses. We're not going to have multiple witnesses today, but we'll see how that would come into play a little bit later. And then we'll go down here to photos and then we'll add a photo of the incident. And so right there, we got a nice little milk. So we'll do that and open. And if I click on the little expander, you can see that it's just an AI generated image of some milk on the floor. Nothing too terrible. We just want something here to kind of feed the scenario without freaking anyone out or anything crazy, right? So we'll close that. And I mean, the milk smells, right? It needs cleaned up. So we'll hit okay. All right, so we filled our incident report and now we're gonna hit submit. So when we submit this data, it's gonna go get saved over into Dataverse. And so this new data arriving in Dataverse is what is going to trigger our autonomous agent, our incident reporting triage agent to look at it, analyze the whole situation and then make determinations of what's gonna happen. So let's switch over there and take a look at that. And here's my lovely agent, the My Incident Response Agent. So what this agent does is it triages those incidents as they come in and it's going to follow a set of different instructions that we've given it to do that. So to see exactly what it did, let's switch over here to activity. So here you can see all the different runs that have happened. And so we'll take this most recent one and this allows us to look through the process. So you can see that the first thing it did was got the incident main. So that was stuff like location, severity, the original description. It then went and got the incident photos. It also got the list of witnesses and their notes. So this is how it got that first pass of information. Here's everything that happened with that incident, both the parent and child data. Then it took the photo and said, okay, I'm going to run this flow to run an AI prompt that is going to pull in a description of the image based on our criteria. So you're going to see, we kind of wrote a larger prompt there to make sure that we're getting the right detail out of the image description but we're using the flow to run that AI prompt for us. That information gets returned to our agent, and then we're going to make sure that we update the photo. So we got the photo, we got the description, and so we're just gonna go push that data back in a Dataverse, so that way we have that for next time. We don't wanna to have to continually re-get the description every time. Then we're gonna send an email with the status of what we've done, and I told you I'd show you that, so let me grab that real quick. So it pulls in the details, the witness information, the photo description, and then it tells that the action was taken. So here's what the agent did for us. 
and then what it set the current status to pending. Now, it'll be really interesting about this when you'll see in a second is that I didn't really lay out most of this. Like I just kind of basically said, hey, update what's going on. And then that's what's happening here. But it's good to see the agent kind of thinking on its own, like, hey, he needs to send an email. This is the information. Let me add some formatting to make it look nicer. All right, let's close that. Okay. And then last but not least, it updates the main incident. So that was that primary, the parent, with just the current status. So in this case, it did it as pending. And of course, along the way, it used its knowledge to augment and think about all the different scenarios and how to do that current status. So how did it know to do all this? Well, let's switch back to the home screen over here in overview. And so here what it did is it primarily relies on the instructions that then uses its knowledge and agents. So let's hit edit here and just kind of work through the instructions and then look at the pieces as we go. So here, the first thing you see is it's like, all right, get the following information about the incident number. So from main witnesses and photos using actions. So if we were to look at our actions, we would see that we have a list row. So we're using a dataverse list rows for main and then for our photos and then our witnesses. So each one of these is an independent dataverse action that's been configured to get the necessary records. So like if we look at the witnesses, for example, and here it's got a display name description. So it knows how to use it, what to use it for. And if we look at the inputs, so there's our environment, our dataverse table, and then down here, it's doing a filter row. So it's going to pass an OData query and it's using the format of this um, to pull it in. So what's happening there is that we wrote the description to explain to the agent, like, hey, I've already given you this one piece of information. I want you to use it to craft this string right here, but of course, replace it with the correct incident ID that's going on. So we don't want to hard code it, obviously, right? Every incident's a new ID. So I use my prompting skills to craft a prompt to tell the agent how to do this for itself. Now, another super pro trick down here, you notice here I'm using also select columns and I have name, phone number, and notes. And those are the logical names from Dataverse. So what I'm doing in this case is if you just say list the rows, it's gonna return all the Dataverse columns, right? There's like 50, all those different team IDs and creators and owners and sequence IDs, all these crazy pieces of information, which if you need them, great. But in this case, it was just distracting my agent. It was more information than it was going to use. So anytime that I'm getting data back, I'm always trying to carve out exactly what rows I want and of course, what columns. So here, I just want these three columns. That's all the agent needs to do its job. So let's only pull back the data. Like this is, this is next level pro trick right here, trying to reduce the amount that your agent has to think, right? We're always trying to do that. We're always trying to say, hey, let's not distract it with that extra information. And this is a great example of an easy way to do that. Okay, so all three of my list rows are configured in some form of this. All right, so let's go back over to overview. We'll leave this. And remember, if you're thinking, well, Shane, well, we want to see all those details. Remember, just a little bit later, we're going to do a complete step-by-step. -step we're going to build this exact agent, every piece of it together. So right now, we're just trying to get an idea of what's going on. Later on, we'll worry about exactly how to do it all. Okay, we'll hit edit here again. And if you're wondering why I keep adding edit, it's just, it, it's a lot easier to read when it's in edit mode. That's what I always do. Okay, so now we've got all that information. Then we're going to get the image description of the photo by using this particular action. Once again, if we go back to our actions, so that is actually a flow right here. And so what this flow is going to do is it takes one input, the incident row ID, and we told it how to get that. So, hey, when you did the get incident photos, it returned this field, put that field in here. And then it flips it over to flow so flow can get the answers for us. So let's go get the flow as well. So we go back to details. And then over here on the right, we can just click and it'll take us straight to the flow. And now I'm going to hit edit up here. Okay. And so the flow is triggered by Copilot. And so it's passing in that information as we could expect. We're then going to get the file. We're going to pull in the file based on that parameter, the incident row ID that just came in. Then we're going to run an AI prompt. And so if we click on that, and it's just going to get past the image. And if we click edit here, we can see my lovely prompt, right? I'm not just saying, give me a photo description. I get into the details of, hey, I want you to look at the photo this way. I want you to think about it like this. I want these descriptions on the foreground, the background objects. And I also want you to end with your thoughts on the scene, right? The mood or urgency of the scene. So it's just another data point because we're going to pass all this back to the large language model that's facilitating our agent. And so this will be some more information for it to make the best decision possible. Okay, so we close out that. And then once we've got that, we respond back with just an image description back to our original agent. Okay, we'll jump back over to our agent. And so then here, 
once we've got that, then we're going to say evaluate the incident report information, right? We want to determine the severity of the incident. We don't want to just take the user severity. We want to process and think a little bit here. Remember, we ranked it as high, even though it was just some spilled milk. And so the way that's going to happen is it's going to do that using the knowledge. So if we scroll down a little bit, we configured knowledge, which is a SharePoint document. So we'll click on that. There's a the knowledge URL, right? Make it easier for yourself to open. And if I click on that, it's going to open a document for me in Word. And so in here, this is all of the guide for how to triage an incident. So we got points to consider. We got major incidents, non-major incidents, personal injury, property damage, and finally pending. So what we've done here, right, was we've crafted a document that's in our procedures for how we categorize images. And so we're providing that to our agent so it can make better decisions itself. Now, the really great thing about this, if you think about it, over time, this document's going to evolve, right? Someone on the safety committee or incidents or HR, someone's going to want to update the document. If I'd put all this in the instructions of my agent, then the agent would have to get modified every time this document needed updated. And some companies, that could be almost daily, and nobody wants to be editing their agent all the time. So instead, right, we made it a document so they can just edit the document, and then as that gets saved, the next time the agent runs, it'll just see the new information. The other thing I like about this is so while I originally started with just major incidents, minor, right, I kind of spelled it out, I've also found like over time, like there's certain things that, you know, are getting miscategorized. So this might be because, you know, the agent thinks something's more severe than you do. It might be because you're using some language that it doesn't understand, but it's kind of standard language at your business. So I added this points to consider a set of bullet points. And I imagine over time, like this is where they're going to come in to kind of do the fine tuning. They're going to kind of keep adding different points along the way. The other secret of this document is once I wrote the first version and I was, you know, still struggling with it always to connect the dots. What I did was I took it and I handed all the information in this document over to Copilot chat. And I said, Hey, Here's the document, here's my scenario, here's what I'm working on, here are the things that aren't flagging right, and it helped me refine the document. So don't be afraid to use your other AI tools to help you do a better job in setting up the instructions for this AI, okay? So anyway, this document, we'll look at it more later, but I thought this was a great way to, you know, utilize the ability to let users make updates to the process themselves without them touching my agent. Okay, let's close this. Okay, so that's the only knowledge that we're using in this particular one, right? We could have other knowledge, but that's all we need for this. So back over here to overview. And so here then, once we've kind of figured out, all right, this is what I think of what's going on, then we send an email with the update, right? I showed you the email already, but notice how little I wrote there. One of my, another pro tricks here, right? Always do this. The body of the email is always well formatted HTML, right? Outlook wants HTML emails, you don't want plain text over there. Always tell it well-formatted HTML, and that tends to do a great job. You could be more specific, but that does a really good job, I found. But this is basically my chance to send over to whomever I want to get this, like, hey, here's what the incident's going on with, you know, how did it get escalated? And it also provides a little bit of insight at the end of why did you choose the severity that you did, which has helped me troubleshoot as I've been trying to refine how this works. So. That email, you know, I might remove that final line about, you know, explaining your logic once it goes live, but especially while I'm building, like the more insights I get into what's going on, the easier it is for me to tune this thing. And so then finally we set the current status field. And so this is where we write back to Dataverse so that we can update our business data so that, you know, the process can continue and whatever is going to happen with that based on whatever these outcomes are, like that's a different system, right? This agent's job is just to triage. You want to build your agents all to be very targeted. You know, I want it to have one job. This one's job is a triage. Maybe there's another one that when that status gets updated, another agent needs to go do something. I don't know. Maybe there is, maybe there isn't. But this agent doesn't want to try to think about too many things at once. It just wants the job of doing the triaging and then kick the thing down the next process, whether a human picks up, an agent picks up, or if it just sits there in a pending state forever because we don't respond to our incidents. That'd be bad, but it might happen. Okay, so that's the overview of this agent. We looked at the knowledge. Uh, we don't have any topics in this one. Interestingly enough, in an agent that is autonomous, you actually turn off all the topics, right? I literally even think we might go back later and delete these. I haven't been brave enough to delete them all yet, but you don't want these running. That's back to that singular focus. Like, my agent's never going to have a conversation start, so we don't want a topic for conversation start because it's just one more thing to think about. It goes, hey, do I need to do a conversation start? No, the answer is always no. So let's not make our agent have to think about that. The less your agent has to think, 
the better off you're going to be, right? The better solutions you're going to get because you've got a narrower scope. We talked about all the different actions. We're going to build all these together later, but I just wanted you to kind of get that picture of like, all right, you know, there's what, seven different things going on there. All of them with good names and descriptions to make sure that they can get called appropriately to do the jobs they need. Over here on activity. So this is where we started. This is where you can see, you know, when it runs autonomously versus when I've ran it. And you can go back in like we did before. We clicked in here and we could see what had happened with the activity map. And we could kind of break these down. Like if I'm like, hey, what did you get back on this step? Hit this and look, there's what came back. There's the output from our flow. So we can read it line by line if we're curious what happened. Um, also under activity map, make sure you don't miss that there's a transcript. Usually with your autonomous agents, it's just going to be the start of the conversation like that. But if you're, if your agent's getting stuck, it's not finishing. A lot of times I find in the transcript, you can see it's asking for something like, oh, it shouldn't have asked for that. And so you need to go figure out what you did to cause it to ask for additional information because an autonomous agent shouldn't. So transcripts are a great place to kind of come back and just double check yourself. Analytics. You know, this is just an agent I've been building for myself back and forth. So not a lot of activity, but this is where you come to see the outcomes, the engagements, what's been used, the different satisfaction levels, all of that as your agent goes into production. And then here on channels. So for this one, we do need to publish it. It has to be published before we can trigger it. But keep in mind that you're not going to publish it out to Teams and Microsoft 365 or website, any of these places. You could. But that's not what this agent was. It's not meant to be a chatbot. It's meant to sit here and run in the background and do activities based off of those triggers. So I didn't come in here and click any of these buttons at the end of the day, right? I didn't come to channels at all for this one. And so speaking of triggers, we go back to overview, right? So we kind of hit all these things. The last thing we haven't talked about is the triggers. And so this is the thing that tells our agent to wake up and do its job. So I created this with Power Automate. So there is a Power Automate when a new incident is added to Dataverse. And so if we just go here and say edit and Power Automate, as you can imagine, this I built this the same way that I've built every flow I've built for the last seven years of my life. Has it been seven years already? Goodness gracious, it might have been longer than that. I don't know. Anyway, so every time a row is added to our incident mains, right? I can set the scope. Right? There's a bunch of different criteria. Like this is all just regular flow stuff. But basically, anytime one of those incidents gets added, we then send a prompt to our agent. And notice here, we'll talk about this when we do the step-by-step, -step, but I kind of craft this a little bit, right? Please process the following incident report. The incident row ID is this information because that one ID is then how we connect all the dots over there to pull in the parent, the child data, get the photos, like everything comes back. And so it just needs that one key. So once again, I would not send it a whole bunch of information about when the row was added or modified because if I don't want it to have that information, then why overwhelm it? So I just need it to give the key. Everything happens from the key. So that's what I send here. But this is just a regular flow. You could add a bunch of other steps. If you want to do 25 things here before you send the thing to Copilot, great, do that. Whatever you know how to do in flow, you can incorporate over here. You know, we want to fix this up with an expression, do more dynamic content. You got this, okay? So anyway, so that's how this agent knows when to do its job is this trigger. Okay, so I think that's a good overview of our agent. Hopefully this demo got you excited. Hopefully I'll see you a little bit later when we're going to you know, build this whole thing together. Well, that was fun. Now we've seen how a fully autonomous agent can help make complex decisions by using the ability to reason over multiple data points and then take action. By incorporating business data, actions, flows, and even AI prompts, we're able to make a robust agent-based decision on our business logic. In the next module, Jack from Microsoft returns and is going to join us to demonstrate a more complex agent to really help inspire us to what is possible. I'm looking forward to what he has to show, so let's jump to that next video and check it out.